Well, if you've ever wanted to lace up and skate with the pros, you have a chance to do it. Here's one right here, Kirk McLean in the house. Thanks for coming in today. You and French is joining us. You and French, because we're talking about an event called Hockey for the Homeless. And this is a, a way you can play hockey with some Connect alumni and help raise money for the homeless in Vancouver. And it's you, talking about the stuff. You and is the brainchild of it all. So what is Hockey for the Homeless all about? It's uh, it's a it's a one-day hockey tournament held February 20th at UBC. It's, uh, it, we're all volunteers. The money goes directly into the homeless situation in Vancouver. Right. So this started in Toronto, it spread to Montreal, and it's sort of made its way westward. Right? That's right. It's it's migrating across Canada. It's such a popular uh, you know event, and it's mm -hmm. such a worthy cause. So it's been around since '96 in Toronto, right. and they've raised close to two million dollars. And we feel that Vancouver is a, a needy city, and for sure. It, and we have a great alumni association here with some great support. Yeah, you, you got this uh, sniper over here. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about the uh, events, you must play a lot of these. We must be tough to say no. Well, it, it isn't tough to say no, and that's the thing, because this is what our, our alumni is all about, is to give back to the community and, and raise funds for whatever charity it may be. And of course, this one, uh, Hockey for the Homeless, is something new uh, here in Vancouver, mm -hmm. as you and touched on, but it uh, uh, gives us a chance now to, to dig into this uh, problem that uh, mm -hmm. is pretty big in Vancouver, as everybody knows. You and why hockey and, and why the homeless? How do you bring the two together? What, what was the idea behind it. Well, I mean, you know, we're a hockey country. We're, we're mad Absolutely. about hockey, and uh, it's a compassionate uh, event. We're, it's like a hockey fantasy camp, but with a humanitarian sort of <laughs> cause. Yeah. You know, so you can feel good about going out and skipping, uh, skipping a day of work and playing hockey. And Three games, though. Woo! Yeah. Three, you know, $300 <laughs> is the entry fee. Yes. And it's a really good deal because you're guaranteed three games. You're guaranteed three games. A couple teams will play in the championship, uh, four games. Uh, you get a Hockey for the homeless hockey bag. You get a jersey like this. Mm -hmm. You get uh, lunch. You get dinner with a keynote speaker. You get, but more importantly, you get to hang out with 16. You get to try to score yeah. a goal on this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm scoring the goals. Uh, now. See, I have seen the uh, goal since the day I retired. I was just going to say that's the one thing that I always notice when I look at you at these events. You like playing out. You haven't put on the pads since you retired. Yeah, yeah. no, I love playing out. It's yeah. uh, obviously. It's, uh, a different perspective, but uh, playing goal for pretty much all my life since about the age of six uh, gives me a chance now to, to shoot on other goalies and, and really enjoy it. And still, still as a goal as a goaltender, even though you're going into alumni hockey or, or beer league hockey, um, you still feel the pressure. The puck still hurts. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the joints still hurt when you're kind of flopping around like trying to make it. Hey, when you look back at this footage, uh, you're stuck with the cars. You must just look and smile. Obviously, their credit is not winning that Stanley Cup, but uh, how fondly do you look back in the career and you look at these uniforms and you think yourself, these are worse? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, a little earlier there was one with the, with the old uh, yellow goldie, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those are kind of yucky, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so at the time. I was just uh, obviously uh, extremely happy to be here in Vancouver and living out the dream. And, and uh, you know, we were lucky enough at that time where, where our team was able to grow together and get to that, that, that point for the 94 playoffs, mm -hmm. and unfortunately we, we couldn't close the deal. Great time to be uh, yeah. on that team. Yeah. A nice beard you got going Thank on. You. Yeah, what were you saying about the beard? You're not shaving until when? I'm going to keep it until the comments get on a nice roll. Uh, I'm going to reverse psychology instead of a play on beard. <laughs> I'm going to shave, shave it off. That's very player. nice. Hey, i got to ask you, I want to put you in the hot seat, this whole Roberto Luongo thing, yeah. whether or not he should play in the skills competition, whether or not he should be going to the All-Star game. As a, as a goaltender who carried a lot of workload, mm -hmm. guy who had been hurt and all the rest, do you put yourself in a bit of bit of a precarious position if you go into that skills competition. Would you agree with the way they go at it now? Yeah, I would agree, but you can you can say that maybe in the, even in the uh, uh, regular game because, it's, as you know, there's, there's zero defense and there's a lot of throwing the puck around so the goalies dive in and stretching and what have you. But, you know, Roberto's deemed himself 100% healthy. He's come back. He's played uh, two games or so plus with a bunch of uh, practices and I think it would actually be good for him to play in the game and get it, you know, it's a period. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think he's going to really exert, exert himself too much, but yeah, maybe take off the uh, the skills competition because it can get a, the goalies are really out there as targets and the skills competition is really uh, for the pores and the defense. Hey, getting back to the event, how much do you get a kick out of the guys who come out and, and play the charity games against you because, you know, for a lot of guys who who watched you, you know, in the memorial, in that run to the 294 run. Well, and like it's you were saying, it's like a hockey camp. Yeah, and what's it like 
happy to be in the dressing room with these guys and be on the edge because they're having a great time. It is. It's a great time for us. We have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we tell stories and they tell stories back about mm -hmm. where they were on, and whether it would be 94 or, or Do they ever get old? Do they ever get old? No, they don't. You know, you, and then you just you, are constantly reminded, I'm sure, of how much a hockey town this is, too. Absolutely. And, and, well, I see it every day, mm -hmm. you know, sure. walking, walking the streets or, or, or listening to the radio. So it's very, very exciting and it's very, uh, you know, honor to be part of uh, something like this to give back to to uh, the community and, uh, and a worthy, worthy cause. You've got 16 Canucks involved? Yes, yeah, 16 uh, Canuck and alumni playing. Uh, we have uh, some great sponsors as well. Uh, Park Lane Homes, Cadbury and Pepsi have all come on board to help us out uh, with the fundraising. Right. That's great. And uh, we're always looking for more. So it's uh, for more sponsors. More sponsors, more yeah. players too. So it's uh, Kirk, obviously. Who else is coming out? Uh, we have uh, the 16 Dave Babbitt, yeah. Shea Shea Clonin, Clonin, Michael Clonin, 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 I think uh, um, like some Gary Volk. Gary Volk. I think uh, uh, ex uh, NHLers are on uh, my uh, Gary Nyman, I believe. Yeah. I believe Doug Hallward's actually coming out play as well. Okay, yeah. who's the guy who can still dangle? Oh, yeah. 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 Gosh, that's a good one. Because you know what, it's not going to be you or I or anyone else. I always say in practice, the toughest ones I, I ever was with Pavel. Yeah. Obviously, uh, even Jim Sandlack would come down to really shoot the puck. But hey, Al McInnes, uh, Brett Hall, Mary Lemieux, you um, can go down the line. I mean, each team probably had one or two. Who was more talented, Pavel or Al McInnes? Oh, yeah, what a question. Well, you got to see the table. Fifth, I'm taking the fifth on that one. <laughs> two, two different types of, of, of players. Pavel was, uh, you know, very power-like forward. Uh, and where, where Alex was more of a puck possession that uh, could really uh, slow the game down and, and, and his vision uh, for, mm -hmm. for finding players as well. But, uh, you know, they were both uh, very great hockey players. In, in oh, America. how diplomatic. Yeah. <laughs> you took all that the hard seat by the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. And the best part about playing on the hockey don't have to back check, right? You got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like this in the red line. There you go. Yeah. $300, uh, and it's taking place February 28th. And how do we find out more about it? Uh, go to hockeyforthehomeless.com. And just one more thing, the, the money raised is, is going to buy survival kits for uh, the homeless people. Yes, yeah, survival kits and uh, specific projects within the homeless community. Mm -hmm. So like Montreal, they, they built showers for a women's shelter. And oh. so be examples like that. Okay. Yeah. All the money raised will stay here. That's great. Yeah, all the money stays in my See, uh, Ewan's uh, a Canadian fan, so he's ready to get his colors. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that. How we got him on the set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry about that. That's, that's, that's the jersey that's that's right. 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 Yeah, everyone gets the different colored Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. So eight <laughs> different right. colors. But uh, six of them will be original. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in, guys. You're very welcome. Pleasure. Ewan French and Kirk McLean, hockey for the homeless.